In this video, I will show you five cheap and easy hobby hacks which I wish I knew sooner. Let's begin. If you're a bit of a hoarder like me, you might have a big wooden panel laying around which you saved or got from the trash. And don't throw it out, because you can cut it into smaller rectangular pieces and use it to make some budget dungeon tiles. Simply glue something like sand to the top to create a nice texture. And then primed it using some black paint, gave it some color using some brown paint, dry brushed everything. Give it a wash and I then wanted to add some grid lines. You don't have to do this, especially on the smaller ones. However, I prefer this grid system since it's quick and easy. To add some grids to these tiles, I simply made a template using some cardstock and I cut out some slots for the lines. And I then dry brushed some pure white onto the tiles. This came out a bit harsh, so I added a wash on the over top to dull it down a bit. And I also added some grass stuffs to make it a little bit more interesting. And I then protected everything with some matte spray varnish. It's a very simple method and I think the results look great. However, if you're an even more of a budget or if you're just simply very lazy, you can also print out some D&D battle mats you can find online. Print them to size, cut them out and glue them to the pieces of wood. And you can make some double-sided dungeon tiles. Do make sure to protect this with some matte varnish though, as the paper will get damaged quite easily. But even something as cheap and simple as this can yield some great results. And no matter which one of these methods you use, I guarantee you your players will love it. Like I mentioned, I'm a bit of a hoarder, so I have these unused, unburned DVDs laying around. And they're actually quite useful to use as a base. Because unlike materials like chipboard, wood or cardboard, this DVD won't warp and it's still very sturdy. Before gluing anything on top though, make sure to scuff up the surface a little bit because it's very smooth and the glue won't really want to stick to it otherwise. In this case, to create some terrain, I glued a filled 3D print and some styrofoam onto the base. I then filled out the rest of the space using some speckle with some brown ink mixed in. I also added some pebbles and sand to the base to create a nice texture. And as a bonus hack, if you find some cheap fake plants at your local dollar store, you can cut them up and use them for as miniature plants on your base. Make sure to paint them though, because otherwise it won't look realistic. After the speckle and the glue was dry, I primed everything using a few different colors. I painted the rocks brown and painted on and details on the filled 3D print. I added a bunch of weathering with a few washes like a black wash, a brown wash and streaking grime and I dry brushed everything to finish it off. And if someone's ever curious how you made it, you can simply turn it over and show them the underside of the DVD, which I think is kind of fun. If you have spice jars like this at your local supermarket, don't throw them out once they're empty because they make for some great paint handles. They fit in the hand nicely and you can simply use some blue tack to hold the miniature in place. Or if you're someone who magnetizes the miniatures like me for storage, you can simply add some magnetic foil to the top in order to hold your miniatures in place while painting. It obviously doesn't need to be this exact spice jar, you can use any container with a shape like this or even just a piece of wood. It works great and it's a lot cheaper than paint handles such as those sold by GW. Before we move on to the fourth hack, be sure to leave a like and leave a comment down below if you have any cool hobby hacks you'd like to share with us. Thanks! If you don't want to spend a bunch of money to organize and store your paints, go to your local discount or dollar store and buy one of these makeup organizers. This one I bought at the Action fits Vallejo, AK Interactive and Army Painter dropper bottles perfectly. And it also has some space for other things like brushes, coffee stirrers or other bigger paint bottles. You can probably also find them online for very cheap and they're a fraction of the price of even the cheapest MDF paint storage alternatives. And now let's move on to the last hobby hack. This last hack might sound a bit weird, but it's one of the best purchases I've done in the last couple of months. And it is a small trash can for next to my hobby desk. And the reason I bought it is because I'd usually let all the trash accumulate on my desk, simply because I was too lazy to walk to my trash can. It's been great for productivity and keeping my desk organized. And that will be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.